There are but three guarantees in this life. One, death. Two, taxes. Three, video game adaptations are never safe. And that last one is especially true today as we get into some interesting comments from the co-creator of the Fallout TV series. But we're also gonna talk about our first ever clip that we've seen of the Fallout TV show. It's about two minutes long. We get to see the Fallout TV show running in all its glory, dialogue, interactions, a good feel for the set, the pacing, the tone. How is it? We're gonna talk about that and naturally get into the latest news surrounding the Fallout TV show. So thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing fantastic. And if you're into anything Fallout, please consider subscribing. So let's begin with that clip that we saw posted by the Fallout Prime Twitter account where we see our vault dweller Lucy facing off against the ghoul. This is something that we saw bits and pieces of in the last trailer and in fact we're going to use that last trailer to fill in some context clues. Anyway, Lucy is in real time failing a speech check before our very eyes. It's absolutely hilarious watching her talk her way in circles. Like you could almost imagine the dialogue options as she's continuing to go on and on. And the ghoul's just staring at her like, what? And, and the best moment I think of the entire clip, that kind of humor, well, it's not your typical Fallout humor of like that dark, dark humor. It was still good stuff where you see this one lady on the ground just going fucking vault dwellers. Like I thought that was, so great. So I really enjoyed the comedic touch there, but she's just going on and on and on. She unleashes a shot of what seems to be some sort of chem into the ghoul. And as we saw in the trailer, he pulls it out and says that it's just a small drop in a big bucket of drugs. I wish he said chems, but I only have a couple of nitpicks with this scene. And I know it's two minutes out of what seems to be eight hours of content coming our way, but overall, I already knew my eyes liked what I saw. I thought, the costumes, the sets, everything looked great. It was about the feel for the characters and how they interacted. And so when I started to hear the sounds of the Fallout TV show, I understood why I was gravitating towards being more critical of those. What do I mean by that? Okay, just bear with me for a moment here. I know I'm gonna sound like a freak and I might even prove Jonathan Nolan's point in real time here as he says that the Fallout TV series is not really going to be designed to appease fans as it's a fool's errand. And here I am about to complain about how the Brotherhood of Steel Knight sounds because when you listen to the game, it's got a more, I would say, mechanical, hollow tone to it. And what they showed the TV show, look, just hear me out, okay? This man sounds like Emperor Zerg. Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel, stand down or be cut down. So we meet again, but like him for the last time. See, I'm not crazy. It, it it sounds just like it, but then you listen. I had to check myself. I Then I go and I listen to the Fallout 3 Brotherhood of Steel outcast and listen to the difference. About damn time the reinforcements showed up. Fall in, soldier. We got multiple hostiles between here and the base camp. We're sweeping the area to secure it. Let's move. Small, small thing. Not a big deal, I think, but it's just like one of those questions you ask yourself, why is this different? Like, this is a thing you hear for so many games, like, why is this different? Okay, maybe I'm just overreacting, I don't know. But that was the only thing that stood out to me outside of the Iron Man hand jets as he floats down to the ground very awkwardly and slowly. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was hilarious, but I kind of like how it has a passion project feel to it. You know, there's a lot of TV that's overly cleaned up, I would say, almost too perfect too nice, too clean. It's like walking into a house with a very modernistic design and everything spotless. Like you look around my office and I would say this feels very lived in. It's not perfect, but it feels very lived in. And to me, that's my favorite style. So this universe in the way it was edited, the way it was put together, this clip felt very not perfect. And I think some critics will go hard on that. But for me, I like that there was this real touch to it, maybe because in Fallout, the game, I like that there's this, at least lore-wise, very real touch to it. It's like, I believe, oh, this could happen one day. This is kind of scary, but fascinating. And so I want to see what this entire universe has to offer here. So yeah, overall, the clip was pretty good. The characters were funny. The set obviously looked great. And I believe this Brotherhood of Steel Knight is Maximus, as I speculated in my trailer breakdown. It's interesting to see the scratching through the Brotherhood of Steel logo. I'm guessing this is from the battle with the Yaogwai we saw in the trailer. 
I don't know if this is a deliberate, like, screw the Brotherhood. I'm going to go do my own thing with this power armor and take out the ghoul because we know Maximus is out for vengeance on someone or something. We have yet to learn truly what that is, but that's just my prediction that he's looking for the ghoul. We'll see in due time. But anyway, just a little quick thoughts on the two minute clip there. Let's talk about this very interesting headline here that's making the rounds. And I have to say certain outlets are potentially misrepresenting what's happening here with the Fallout TV show. I'm not trying to get ahead of it and defend it before it's released, but I think when you look at a headline like this that says, Fallout TV series co-creator says appeasing fans is a fool's errand, you see that and you go, man, Jonathan Nolan, what a douchebag, am I right? But that's, I don't think that's really what he said. So I'm gonna go through the quote here before we get into his history of the Fallout series and offer my thoughts on what he is trying to say here at the least. So IGN covers it saying, speaking about the new show at a press event attended by T3, Nolan explained that appeasing fans was not his sole intention when making the Fallout series because he knew that would be an unattainable goal, so he instead tried to focus on making the best version of the game to TV series adaptation as a fan himself. Quote, I don't think you can really set out to please the fans of anything or please anyone other than yourself, Nolan asserted. I think you have to come into this trying to make the show that you want to make and trusting that as fans of the game ourselves, we would find the pieces that were essential to us and to try to do the best version, end quote. He then added, quote, it's kind of a fool's errand to try and figure out how to make other people happy. You've got to make yourself happy and I've made myself very happy with the show, end quote. Now this sounds scary for an obvious reason. We just saw what happened with the Avatar The Last Airbender show, like this complete disregard for the source material. The Halo TV show is still in its second season, a living, breathing example of bragging about ignoring much of the source material. Although I've heard that the second season is a big improvement upon the first. I have yet to sit down and put myself through all of that. I have a lot of TV to catch up on before I start watching stuff like that. But point being is we've seen time in time out, the hardcore community ignored. And then you have examples like Cyberpunk Edge Runners, where the hardcore community was completely acknowledged with a deep story that ties into the video game in a meaningful way. And you see not only the explosion of popularity, but the celebration of people beyond the bounds of gaming and what it did for Cyberpunk as a video game. So I don't think adhering to what fans want is necessarily a fool's errand because I think the reward can be massive if you do it right. I get the instance, like he's probably talking about people like me who I'm sitting here going, yeah, the Brother of Steel Knight just, ooh, that kind of irks me how he sounds. And he's probably sitting there like, you fucking kidding me, this guy, really? Like, look at everything else we did and that's what you're talking about. And I think it's fair. Like, I do think part of that is fair. Like, it can be a fool's errand to get every little nook and cranny right, but I think that's what makes it right that's showing reverence for the property and then the fans who love fallout put that on a pedestal and then people who know nothing about fallout go oh well i never played the games but i can watch a tv show i got time for that and they check it out and then it brings them over to the games like i feel it's a pretty natural chain reaction we've seen happen over and over and over again but my interpretation of what he's saying here is maybe the hard hardcore fallout fans like i'm talking there's two divisions of fallout fans that have been there since the start there's the chill fallout one and two category where you know they've just grown with the series they've loved to see where it's gone what it's become not everything's been perfect but they've enjoyed the ride nonetheless and they appreciate what bethesda did in the terms of making it popular and then there's like the super hardcore i would argue more elitist side of the fallout community that's Fallout 1 and 2 is the right way to do it. Bethesda killed the franchise. This is going to be more of mid. It looks awful, yada, yada, yada. And maybe he's talking about that. I would also throw in a third category there and say like the Star Wars equivalent of the Fallout fan. By that, I mean, we just got the new Acolyte trailer. And I was personally very excited for that because I've read some of the High Republic books and I was hyped to see what they were gonna do when they brought it to the big screen. Right now, I'm not feeling super confident about what they're showing off here. We will check it out nonetheless out of morbid curiosity you now. It doesn't look awful, but point being is there was this scene where someone used a force push and when they use the force push, instead of blasting them away, like you typically see in Star Wars movies and TV, instead they slid on the ground a bit and they didn't go that far flying. And there were comments, people saying, what's changing with the physics when using the force? Or like there was one time in one of the High Republic comic books, I apologize, I don't remember what issue it was, but someone was about to fall, they used their lightsaber to stick it into the wall and it didn't like bring them all the way down. They used it almost to stab into the wall like a sword or something like that. And people were freaking out about that. So I think maybe that's what Nolan's talking about here. Like 
the it's a fool's errand because you're gonna piss someone off somewhere. And so he says, hey, like we're fans of Fallout and if we're fans of Fallout and we're doing stuff that we like, then maybe that is something everyone will like. Here is the key. He is in particular a massive fan of Fallout 3, something I can relate to, so it's music to my ears, but maybe not to everyone else. So he says, for me, it started with Fallout 3, which devoured about a year of my life, recalling the moment he found and got hooked on the games. I was an aspiring young writer at that point, and it almost derailed my entire career. It's so ludicrously playable and fun, seriously, the games were just incredible. It's such a rare and unbelievable thing that I've gotten to do twice in my career, to take something that you love and get a chance to play in that universe, to create your own version. The first go around for me was Batman, and this time with Fallout, a series of games that I absolutely loved. So he's referencing Fallout 3 where it began. He didn't really get into what other Fallout games he had played. Maybe he's played four. I don't know if he went and played New Vegas, went into the deep cuts with Fallout 1 and 2. So maybe he went into that deep cut with like Fallout 1 and 2. I typically see people play the modern Fallouts first. And if they really love that world, then it just, you want more of that and you go into Fallout 1 and 2. So maybe he went ahead and did that. That would be the hope obviously because you want to see like especially when you're doing things with shady sands that are of significant consequence i feel like fallout one and two need to be played and respect in that way and the other thing worth considering is how much does that love branch to other storytellers what i mean by that is the first three episodes we know are directed by nolan we don't know beyond that and let's say he gets to play around with three episodes and set up a great tone i always look at we used the star wars example earlier i, I look at what happened with the sequel trilogy right like you had multiple directors conflicting visions and obviously once we got to the end of it all it wasn't much of a conclusion and the story was a complete mess so i'm really hoping here that when the baton is passed to a new director it's someone who has that same adoration that same enthusiasm we don't know if it's going to be multiple seasons if it's a one-time story great but we, we don't really know yet so we'll see in due time here but nonetheless an interesting update on what's happening with fallout and just again to help gauge those expectations more than anything I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. Do you find what Nolan said any bit worrying at all? Let me know down below. What are your thoughts also on the clip that released for the Fallout TV show? I'm looking forward to seeing that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.